Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Behind the Struggle podcast. I'm uh, your host, CEO, joined by Alexia today. And um, today we're going to be talking about a pretty, um, I guess, delicate topic or subject. Only reason is because, you know, uh, this year, Billboard, they released their uh, top 50 greatest rappers of all time. And I know there was a lot of debate, you know, about the people on the list. But I noticed another thing coming back up again, and we spoke about this um on season one where I was talking about some of the stuff that happens towards Eminem, spoiler alert. So before we get into it, I just want to give a disclaimer. These are just our observations and opinions. We're not saying that our way of thinking is the right way or the only way or that other people who are giving these opinions are 100% wrong, but we're just giving our own objective perspective on these things that we're witnessing going on forward. So don't try to take anything too hard or try to label us as racist or whatever. No, yeah, just thought it was worth a discussion. Yeah, exactly. So what I want to talk about today is um the racism that goes on in hip-hop and primarily towards uh, white artists, the white hip-hop artists that come on into the scene. Um, I touched on earlier where, you know, Billboard put out their top 50 greatest rappers. And I noticed there was a lot of contention and people having issues with Eminem being number five. Why? Well, before I get into that, now, this isn't going to be just about Eminem. He is going to come up a couple times because he is... He's the uh, prime example. And you guys should already know that I love Eminem. So <laughs> You know, he's also the most successful white rapper if not no not if not is by far is the most successful rapper as well as far as like if you want to go into sales and numbers and all that stuff um and i just noticed a lot of that happens and i was watching a podcast uh the other day and uh forget the woman's name but she was asking jonah hill his top five and he kind of broke it down in in order and he was like oh jay-z Biggie, Pac, Nas, and M. And then she said, really M though? Like, why him? And then Jonah Hill was like, well, M's sole purpose is to body people on records. And then she's like, yeah, but he's the Larry Bird of rap. Like, you know, like, he's good, but he's not great. And it was that, huh? com- yeah, it was that comment that bothered me because I was like, so you're saying he's the Larry Bird of rap? Yes, Larry Bird was white. He's also mad nice as the basketball player. So to say that it's a compliment, but the undertone to it is like M can't be up there because he's white. That sounds like it's only based on one thing, too. Like there will be like five attributes. You could literally be like hands are cool. But did you know that that hand has a thumb like they all what? Yeah. Or it's a white hand, you know, so (laughs) I kind of want to touch on that because I know I found that to be a bit disturbing as someone who was in hip hop and I don't know. I just find it to be very, um, it brings me back to like segregation where it's like, Oh, like you're good, but because you're white, you can't be considered. And I kind of want to dissect why does the hip hop community or certain members of the hip hop community feel like they need to gatekeep. Okay. Wait, my mind is low key racing just cause I agree. And I don't, like what i'm peeping this racism in hip-hop but it brings me back to the episode we did on ai where we touched on how this fake or this artificial rapper got signed and he was saying the n-word and then they found out that it was two white guys behind this i don't know my Fortnite looking guy um Mm -hmm. in the digital realm so like that's that makes sense that's not that's racist on the white man's part, but him being unsigned from Capitol and not being able to rap anymore, that's not the racism part. So heavily, this is on the pure fact that like Eminem amongst every other white rapper immediately gets this like extra weight on their shoulders. Like they're judged extra, their expectations are higher just because they're white. Yeah, but not even that, because let's say the expectations are higher, right? And if we're going to compare Eminem to 
his counterpart, his closest counterpart would be Drake. So it's a light-skinned artist, but we're just looking at it from the successes, right? Eminem has sold the most records. Eminem is also the only hip-hop artist to have three Diamond records. Eminem also played a role in making hip-hop global. Yes, because he was white, that was a contributing factor, but it also helped open the doors to other markets of people to be able to embrace hip-hop. So, kind of to your point, it's like, even though they need to exceed a bit more, it's like, all right, well, Eminem has already exceeded, like, by far beyond what anybody else has done. So it's like, no, it that's seems true. Like, I'm just wondering hypothetically if, let's say, we heard Eminem and just never saw him, like, uh, Big C. Is that his name? The graffiti artist? Banksy, yeah. Banksy. <laughs> Who's Big Z? Is that a rabbit? Anyway, um, no, no. if no one ever saw, like, what Eminem looked like on his talent and his voice or whatever alone, do you think he would have soared quicker? Or higher. I don't believe so. I mean, it's hard to say. It's hypothetical. But, like, let's be real. Elephant in the room. I mean, the funny thing that you said that is because that's how Dr. Dre discovered him. When Dr. Dre was rebuilding his own record label and he called it Aftermath, he was looking through demo tapes. And he heard a demo tape, like, of Eminem rapping on the radio. And at the time, they didn't have the internet like we did. it, So he didn't know Eminem was white. He thought he thought he was black. He just thought, yo, this guy is nasty. He just got he just got skill. He's just talented. And it wasn't until Eminem came in wearing a yellow, you know, jumpsuit that he was like, whoa, like this guy's white, you know. But for Dre, it was like that doesn't matter because talent is talent. But that's Dre. Because Dre is a talented producer himself, so I see why he wasn't like, oh, hold up, like can't have that. But like. The masses, like the fans, uh, I mean, as well as the industry, but the fans, like they, you know, they're, whether they admit it, like to admit it or not, are all, I think, a little bit racist in that regard. I, I would agree. I think there's definitely some racism that plays into it. And we're not saying that tone, like a, like a um, losing words again, Um, like a habit at this point. Where people are like, oh, if we're listening to rap, you know, we're assuming that that person spitting is black. And if he's not, and we know that, then we're already extra critical, extra judgy of the sound of every bit of that song. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely their their ears perk up a bit more and they start to pay attention. Like, oh, let's see if he's going to drop the M-bomb. Let's see if he's going to say something controversial that touches on race or whatever you know yeah, so or they're like, like oh that doesn't ma- actually this reminds me of a conversation i was having um about jack harlow weirdly enough like i'm not like wow jack harlow like wow you know like whatever but um i was in a in a room full of like i guess you know white guys and it was just like me and like three or four of them pause shut up oh my god <laughs> guys can i tell a story without y'all going there um And Jack Harlow was playing on YouTube or something. And I don't remember what song it was because I'm not, like I said, like a diehard Jack Harlow fan. But it was not corny. But I mean, like, I don't know why this playlist was playing. And Jack Harlow said a couple lines. And I said, like, out loud, like, ooh, like, that's a bar. And, oh, there's another one. And the white men in the room were like, that's not a bar. It, It makes sense because it's supposed to. That's, like, that's rap. And I'm like. Are you dumb? Like, literally almost fought. And I wasn't their home. Like, I wasn't even in my house. I almost fought with them because I'm like, so you're literally saying that, like, some black rapper could be ch- talking gibberish. Literally, you don't even know what he's saying. And you're like, oh, this sounds nice. But Jack Harlow, because he's white, he says, like, four lines in a row that, like, not only rhyme, but they, like, I don't know, let's say had a double entendre and they just sounded like, and they were eye-opening, right? But that bothers you because he's white. And I was just like low key triggered by that, you know? Based on that story that you're telling, to me, and I, I'm, I'm always speculating because newsflash, everybody, I'm not white. Um, I'm thinking that 
maybe these white guys that you are hanging out with, um, maybe it's a part of like the white guilt where it's just like when a white rapper is in there and we're white, we can't give him as much credit because he's white and we're white and this is black music. So we shouldn't have that much of an opinion. Because he's not supposed to be there. Well, I, I'm just, I'm, like I said, I'm just speculating. That's what it is. It's almost like when the whole Black Lives Matter thing happened. It's like anyone that said anything in opposition to that, like Blue Lives Matter or All Lives Matter, it was almost like you became an enemy. So I think that's an extreme example, but I think it's the same thing. It's like it's a bunch of white guys are talking about a genre of music that is predominantly created, not predominantly created, was created by black people. And then there's a white artist. I think there's a bit of this like white guilt or like, oh, we got to hold it back a little bit because this isn't our culture to be giving these kind of titles to certain people who are especially viewed as guests in the house of hip hop. And then if it's a black artist doing the same silly thing that you're talking about, it's like, well, we better not say anything about that either because then we're going to look like we're racist or like we don't understand the culture because it's like he's black. So it must be rap. It must be of the culture and hip hop because hip hop is black music. Hmm, I don't think of it that way. I've never thought of it that way, so it's hard for me to like be like, oh, yeah, this could be a possibility because that just doesn't cross my mind. Mm -hmm. But I guess in a sense that makes sense because if it's not hip-hop, let's say it was, um, I don't know. I'm not trying to offend anyone. Uh, let's say it was like, I don't know, like a uh, Muslim, right? So if you saw a white guy like in the turban and the robe and the like the whole thing, you you'd be like, Oh, like taking a back, you know, not that you would say anything to that white man, but you'd be like, oh, that's usually reserved for not white men. Right. Mm -hmm. Was that was that crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, just, I was just really I'm like... trying to follow your train of thought. And that's kind of where I went with that. I was like, OK, I could see why you're saying that or why they might say that. Well, how I kind of see, I guess I make it more clear what I'm saying. It's almost. No, I know what you're saying, because black guys in country, people are like, what the hell? But they're also like, that actually sounds good, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you're right. They don't want to be like, you shouldn't be here, because God forbid a white man says anything like that to, like, a black man. Yeah, I mean, that happened to Little Nas X, right? When he came out with that song, Old Town Road, they refused to put him on the country billboard charts because they said it wasn't country and a lot of people are like it's a country song but they wasn't deemed country because a lot of people believe they didn't see it as country because it's a black guy singing a song and it wasn't until he got i think it was miley cyrus's dad on the remix who's a white country what? artist i didn't even know about this yeah when they got him on the remix then they finally put it on the country billboard charts Oh, so it okay. I was saying that that doesn't happen, but you, now you're saying that it does. So I'm actually a little shook. Okay. Yeah, where like they like kind of like, oh, well, it's not technically country, and like a lot of people are thinking, well, you're saying it's technically not country because it's a black guy doing country music, and but for the fact that he's black, you're not considering it country. But he had to get a white oh, country no. artist. Oh no. Well, if it happens both ways, then it's not necessary. I don't. I mean, it's still racist, but like if it's more even playing field it's like fucked up twice you know it's not like oh you can you know hate on white rappers because we don't want black people in the country genre or the pop genre i don't know whatever yeah it's, it's almost like gatekeeping like i was saying and i think going uh -huh. back to the example or the story you were telling with those guys i think it's a thing of where basically if you're not of the same race you're not allowed to criticize or say anything about it because you're not part of that race. I mean, I think maybe that's how they, like I said, it's all speculation how they saw it or maybe how other people may see it. You know, it's like you have no business speaking about what black people are doing because you're not black. So like all you can do is empathize with what's going on or be objective but you don't live through it like you don't you've never lived the experience of being black so you don't know what it's like to just walk out your door and be black so it's like i guess it's that kind of thinking i hear you but that doesn't negate the fact that anyone could have this talent because at the end of the day rap is art 
like, okay, let's say black people 100% created it. I have no problem. I'm not going to argue with you on that. But why would that stay reserved for only black people, especially if some white rappers are really good at it? Like, No, I, I, I agree with you. And I think what it is is that basically um, when you're looking at the foundation and the people that laid the bricks for the foundation of hip hop, you know, we talked about this on the B-Boy podcast, uh, Breaking, and it was talking about, like, you know, like, what are the foundation of hip, hip hop, like, peace, uh, unity, having fun, you know, and it's like all these things, but. And none of those things are specific to a uh, one race. Well, here's the thing, and this is kind of like where I'm. I I think like I'm playing devil's advocate right now, where they kind of see it, right? It's like, okay, that is not specific to one race. That is true, but the people who laid that foundation, who created that genre, were of a race. So even though they laid down those bricks of that foundation, you know, those individuals were built by pain and suffering that white people know nothing about. And, like, that was, like, their way of an outlet, you know, um, for these individuals to express their emotions to America. And and they built a culture from that. And I think for them, it's almost like they feel they had to protect it, the culture at all costs, you know, because it's, it's something, like, it's I guess it's hard for, for them to be able to let, a white person, you know, watch this objectively and see something they themselves, they have never experienced, but then try to claim ownership of it because it's foreign to them. So playing the role of an ignorant devil's advocate, what suffering, I mean, obviously, like I, I can guess, but what suffering are you speaking of that you or this culture are claiming that white people have zero idea about? I want to say zero idea, but all right, what happens to black people is that when other people look at them, they believe everything they have is theirs. And this has been reinforced through centuries, 400 years of slavery, taking these people from their native land and stripping them from their heritage, their religion, their culture, their native tongue, even their own, like, way of thought and being able to be educated. So now it's like after 400 years and now you're creating this genre that is primarily created, not primarily is created by black people. And you've seen rock and roll get taken by white people. You've seen jazz happen. Okay. Wait, reverse a little bit. Still playing this role. Are you, are we assuming then, especially for this scenario that black people are the only like ethnicity that that's happened to? No, we're not saying that's the only ethnicity, but you asked what is um this thing that black people feel they need to protect hip hop from or like things that are being taken away from them. And I'm saying when you have a generation of people through 400 years of slavery who have only seen things taken away from them, let, let's, let's, let's go beyond music for a second because it bleeds back into it where... You know, when you go to school and uh, social studies books only tell one side of the story, they don't really tell you about the truth about what happened to black people or, you know, black, you know, um, political figures or war heroes. None of that stuff that people created it. You see all these things that black people may have created or can like say like, oh, we have ownership of and being just be written off in history. Like, oh, no, no, they th- that never happened. So now. Yeah. When- History is only written by the the winner. Exactly. But, you know, more things have been coming up as of lately, especially with the Internet, that, like, you know, a lot of things have been swept under the rugs. That's why a lot of school systems are now, like, having to change how they teach certain things because they're realizing they're leaving a lot of black history out of it. They're almost, like, excluding them from the history. They're leaving a lot of history, period, out of it, but yeah. Yeah, you know, but primarily, like, the black people that were in it because they played a big part in American history. So... I think for them, it's like when they see, I want to say like, and I'm not saying the old school guys. I'm saying like right now, because I, I see it more commonly now happening. It's almost like it's reverting. When they see these white artists coming in and then getting this, this praise and these accolades or uh, becoming more successful, 
in the very genre that they created, I think it's almost like a thing of PTSD. It's like this fear. It's like this thing that we created is now getting taken away from us again. And the white man is coming in and basically appropriating it to make it their own thing. And that's going to be something else that we created that we're going to lose again. Why are you saying that white man is appropriating it instead of just contributing and enjoying it like you guys are? I Like I said, I'm playing devil's advocate. Like I said, I'm trying to understand how they see it. We can't both it. play devil's advocate here. But I'm trying to understand why some people may feel like that. Because if I'm going to be talking about this subject, I don't want to be like, no, they're wrong because they don't agree with my point of view and my perspective and mine's the only one. I think that's kind of an ignorant way to go about it. So I'm trying to understand the other side of why they feel that way and understanding the history of African Americans in America you know, like, it's no wonder why that bleeds into hip-hop. I mean, you look at N.W.A., they had a lot of trouble. Why? Because they made a song called Fuck the Police. Did they make a song called Fuck the Police because they were bored? Or because the police were shooting them and arresting them and gunning people down in the hoods, and they were just like, you know what? I've had enough. I'm going to use this microphone and my music to express the shit I'm dealing with as a black man in the ghetto. Stop me if this is going too far to the left now, but... I'm Chinese, all right? Surprise. So, like, culturally, like, historically, Chinese people aren't really normally so, like, outspoken and whatever, like, um, talking about their problems and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But Chinese people have, they've suffered. Like, in America, they've suffered, right? So, them not creating this platform in which to speak about their pain I guess already puts them at this disadvantage in a sense where you know black people are like well I love making noise and like attention and whatever so they mm. make this genre called rap or whatever and then they you know take and they run with it right so you're saying that not you I'm just saying like we're saying now that like the culture of hip hop was created by black suffrage and then it was fine tuned for entertainment and art or whatever. And today there's racism in almost an opposite way that how blacks feel like they're being still being held in racist positions, I guess, like in their everyday lives. I think it's them more trying to fight for ownership, for the things that they feel belongs to them. And hip-hop rightfully is one of those things where you can't say that because it was created by black people. I mean, I guess to use an analogy with this whole, like I'm trying to see it objectively. Once again, I just got to emphasize that. No, yeah, I'm just pointing out that it's such an outspoken um, medium for which to, you know, sort of not complain, but like, share a story or whatever about all this. So I guess what I'm trying to say is this isn't a history lesson, but like I said, Chinese people have also suffered immensely. And I'm not here to be like, they've suffered more. Like, that's not the point. The point is you don't see, especially, you know, centuries or decades ago, Chinese people being like, I need everyone to know what happened to me. But you see, I want to touch on that. Because I think that's another issue right there. And I'm not saying what you're saying is not valid, but I think for black people, that's already like a trigger because it's like black people are telling you, hey, this bothers me. And then instead of trying to understand, you're like, well, there's never Asian people in us all like that. Jewish. On the, it's like it's like you dismiss him. But like, well, how can we can't be like this other race? How can can't be like these other people? And it's like, that's are you not, not at hearing? all what I'm saying. No, that, like I said, I'm not saying that's what you're saying, but that's how it could be perceived. So I think that's where that aggravation comes from. I mean, to make it more simple, let's take Asians out of it. When all the cop killings were happening. Right. And people were coming over Black Lives Matter. What happened afterwards? People start saying, no, all lives matter. And it's almost like. Yes, we do agree all lives matter, but that's not what we're talking about right now because it's black people being killed by the police. And by you saying all lives matter, 
minimizes the effects of what is actually happening to black people. And now, for just for the record, I'm not trying to make it about all lives matter and black lives matter. That's a whole different other thing. But that's what I'm saying, I guess, when it comes to hip hop. And I think when it's something they hold so close and dear to them, or at least perceived to be, you know, when they try to explain it, and then somebody then tries to use another race or nationality as an example, as like a template to follow, it's almost like you're just dismissing everything they went through. Because you're like, well, the Asians didn't do this. The Jewish student do this. Hispanics didn't do this. Why do you guys got to do this? That's how I think it comes off to them. I understand what you're saying, but I'm not saying that the Chinese didn't do that, so you shouldn't do that. No, like, that's how the black people wanted to express their aggression. That's fine. I was my point was typically Chinese people don't do that. They hide and bottle up their aggression. Yes. So my point was if their way of getting rid of it is I don't know, something less aggressive or poetry or I don't know, acupuncture. I don't know. Um then it would almost be not the same thing, but I mean like if let's say um this is this is not related at all, but like this is what I'm gonna say. Like <laughs> geisha dancing, right? What dancing? Geisha. Oh, okay. Obviously that's like an oriental thing, right? I'm not saying that's oh, I'm dealing with suffering, so let me, you know, become an escort. That's not what I'm saying. My point is that's like an art that they chose to do. Mm. But if like you saw a black person trying to be a geisha I could be wrong, but I feel like people would be like, wow, that's very intriguing and actually give that person more attention, not less. Like in a good way. Mm -hmm. No, and I agree. And I definitely think they would probably be in awe of that, like seeing, you know, a black geisha, but at the same. So that's my point. How come in rap, black people or all people are like, oh, you're not a black person and you're a rapper? Like. That's not cool. Meanwhile, uh, obviously it's all hypothetical. If there was a black girl and she was a geisha, people would be like in awe. They'd like wouldn't pick out her flaws. They'd be like, it's amazing that you're doing this, period. I mean, I can't speak to things that happen outside of the country because I've never left the country. So I can't really say. But in America... I think the reason why that's such a thing that happens in hip hop a lot, especially with African Americans, I think because it's associated with the trauma that African Americans have experienced. So I think going back to what I said, because they've had so many things taken from them when they see somebody like parading around at something that is theirs or almost, and, but, and like then the outside world outside of this uh, genre of culture isn't having a say on it, they feel need to protect it. You know, I, I guess an analogy I would use, it's almost like um, you are, invite someone over to your house for Thanksgiving and it's all your family, your cousins and your normal friends and one person comes who's uh, kind of like, you know, the outsider, you know, but everyone welcomes them. And then they make themselves a little bit too comfortable. And then they sit at the head of the table that's reserved for the person that's at the head of the house. And then other people are like, nah, let him sit there. Let him sit there. And it's like, you don't, you don't realize how wildly disrespectful that is. Like you sitting at the head of the table in someone else's house. I think that's how they see it. That's a really good example. And I can picture that much better that way. But now I have to ask, again, playing this like, you know, sort of role. I'm still agreeing with you that like black people created rap and hip hop or whatever because they're it's their 50th birthday this year and like it's literally a whole thing, fine, but like, still this isn't you know, it's no longer a party like black people have chosen to share this music with the world right so it's no longer the the black person's house, this is mm. now like a resort or like a shared um hall or something so the head of the table that seat is reserved for who earns it and right now i guess that's jay-z and he's black so like why are you worried that eminem is number five <laughs> and, and, and and 
to that point, I'm going to switch gears a little bit, right? I mean, because like you said, like, the foundation of hip-hop was built on peace, love, unity, and having fun. Uh-huh. And the fact that everyone wants to be a part of it means a lot, and that should make us feel great. Because what if it was the opposite reaction, and people said, oh, because it came from black people, we don't want no parts of it. Then how would we feel? Right. Yeah. And something I will say um, is is this, is that hip-hop is not on you. It's in you. So it's based on the environment you grew up in, your upbringing, the people around you, the lingo, the way that you talk. You know, I mean, look, I'm going to get back to Eminem right now. Eminem, for an example, is someone who grew up in the trailer parks. Like, he grew up in poverty he grew up like in a not so good neighborhood he grew up in detroit you know a lot of his friends were black and then he got into the battle scene and he had to earn his stripes by being a really good rapper you know and he lost you know but he kept at it he quit but he kept at it and then you know taking his accolades away you know if you want to say oh well, like eminem's not of the culture like and the other thing you also have to respect as well that i would say is that Eminem is the biggest artist on the planet when it comes to rap. Hands down, the biggest artist. And at any point, he can just go and do his own thing. Like, he can just go strictly independent and do whatever the hell he wants. He don't... Everybody knows who he is. Like, every time Eminem drops, it goes platinum. He's number one every time. But you have to respect the fact also that despite all his successes, all his accolades... He still remains loyal to Dr. Dre, the guy who put him on in the beginning. Like, he's still there. And it's like, he he like he doesn't have to stay. But to me, objectively looking at that, it's like, you got to respect that, man. Like, he never forgot where he came from or who held him down or who gave him his opportunity. So that's why I think, going back to the overall thing, and Eminem was the one that kind of sparked this, it bothers me to see him get all this hate. Because to me, it's like, well... What what does he have to do then to be accepted? Because it seems like he's done everything you possibly could. So it's like he just never will be because he's white. Also, why is like hip hop this sort of exclusive club? Like, why are you limiting it to like one, you know, specific type of person? Wouldn't you if you started a club or a group, wouldn't you want as many members, contributors, investors, whatever as possible? Like the more the merrier, like the more power, the more um, snowball effect, the more attention. Right. Like, why would you be like, this is us and, you know, we need to be number one, but only us. Like, why? No, I, I completely agree with you because it's only causing division and who profits or benefits from that when we start to divide one another? I mean, if we go back to like the 1950s and even the 60s, I mean, black people know what it feels like to be excluded from things just for the simple fact that they're black. You know, when they had the separate bathrooms and the separate water fountains. And it's just like, so that's why the part of me kind of boggles my mind because it's like, you know what it feels like to go through that. So why would you do that to somebody else? Right, right. And on that same note, but just like flipping the script for just a second, like um, not trying to call anyone out, but let's be real. Let's say Iggy Azalea, for example, is like on a mm. radio show and she's rapping like, I don't, it's not good. Like, it's not good. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck did the, she just say? I like how you thought about that to be like, it's not good. I, <laughs> <laughs> But then at the same token, which is like, but it's not, it's not not good because she's a white female. It's not good because it's not good. Right. So, but now when you see like any black man on, on the radio, just cause he's black and just cause he's a man and just cause he's on the radio, everyone's like, Oh, quiet now he's rapping. Right. But like, I've seen plenty of trash rappers that are black. Like, let's be real. So why are they given this platform that they clearly don't deserve? And Iggy doesn't either. But like the point is they should be treated the same. <laughs> I, I agree with you. And I'll push back on that a little bit because um, I have seen 
some uh like videos on YouTube with like those radio freestyles that like Funk Flex or K Slay, you know, rest in peace, um, where they are rapping, or even on uh the Breakfast Club with Charlemagne the God, and it is a black guy that's rapping. I forgot uh I forgot Nikki's ex boyfriend's name. I think his name was Safari or something. And I remember seeing that video, like, he rapped, and then literally Charlemagne the God just looked at him and was like, nah, man, that's not it. Really? That's not it. Like, that's got to yeah, be like, rare then, no because props. I don't see those very often. Yeah, like, it, it doesn't happen a lot, but I won't say that it doesn't happen. But okay, I okay. Don't, you know, going to your point, though, like, I agree. Like, I think Iggy gets it a little bit harder, though. I, yeah, I don't know she's oh, trash, but, yeah, well, I, I think... <laughs> I think she gets it worse, pause, because she's white. So, like, it's just more amplified. And going back to the whole thing that I was um trying to get at with Eminem, it's like, yeah, it's like, what more can he do to, like, be accepted by the culture? I mean, like I said, like, his producer was his best friend, is Dre. His best friend was Proof, who died. Like, he's earned his stripes, like, and... Eminem isn't somebody that I I don't believe to be appropriating from the culture. You know, now look, I can't speak to every white rapper or white artist or white person in the hip hop game or the entertainment circuit of it and like and what's their heart. But objectively and through the years from what I see from M and other certain white rappers, they seem to be like legit hip hop. Like when I look at them, I'm not like, you're hip hop but white. Like, no, I just like no, nah, he's hip hop. I mean, that's how we should be looking at them. You know, it's. Yeah. I mean, because going back to it, right, like that is how we should be looking at it. Going back to that podcast with that girl was like, oh, yeah, he's like the Larry Bird of rap. So I'm like, so his skill doesn't matter because he's white. Like if we just were to like take race from both people, line them up and just look at it as stats, just as numbers, like objectively, Fact. his skills are. If anyone gets an exemption, it's Eminem. Right. But let's then look at, like, any other white rapper then, you know? Like, because there is still talent out there, but obviously not as much as, as M. And M has, like you said, earned his, all his stripes. So, like, yeah, why then hasn't that even carved the way for white rappers to be in there? Did, it, did he make it worse for them? Because he had it hard going in the game at all. Yeah, I don't think he made it worse for them. I just think people then started to put more of a microscope, a microscope on it. I mean... Well, he also gave them a chance because I don't think before him too many white rappers were even getting, like, the time of day. I mean, there were. You had the Beastie Boys. You had... Barely. What? Vanilla Ice? Vanilla Ice don't count. Everybody <laughs> is on the same page with that. <laughs> Ayo, MC Surge. You know, there, there were dudes, the white dudes that were in hip-hop, but none of them eh. took it to the level that M did. Like... Yeah, not even yeah, close. Like even the o- yeah, like even the OGs, like Rakim, Redman, KRS, you ask these guys, and these are the guys that were like there from the beginning. They'll even say like M's and nasty. And hip hop's birth, yo. Yeah, they- they'll say like M is nasty. They give him nothing but props. They're like, you know, I don't they- like there's a-, a little video of Rakim is like, I don't care what his skin color is. He's like, when he's on the mic, that brother's nasty. That's fact. He's like he he's just something else. Red man said the same thing. I even saw a video uh today of Little Wayne saying that. He was on uh drink chats with Noriega and he was like, yo, he's like, how was it being on those records with Eminem? You know, those two records you did together. He's like, cause you know, Eminem has a reputation for bodying people that he's on a record with. And Wayne was like, yo, he's like, I knew that when I got on a record with M. I had to, like, go everything. Like, he wasn't going to do me like that. It wasn't going to be a Jay-Z renegade situation. Because he's like, you know, he's like, because when you go there with M, he's like, it's like you're playing the championship game. He's like, that boy's a beast. You got to come with it. You can't just be like, oh, I'm on the track with M. I'm going to just skate by. He's like, nah, it's M. Just a little like, side gotta, note. I'm still no. salty about uh, Wayne getting fifth place on our GOAT list. But, <clears throat> oh, you're wrong. You're wrong. Wayne didn't get fifth place on our list. He I said M, place. my boy M. I oh, said I'm still okay. salty yeah, I, about it. I apologize. It. Hey, you know what? In hindsight, we'll touch on this a little bit, but I think some things need to be adjusted. Uh, you hear you that, know, Tyler? For it. Anyways, wow. But um, yeah, so it's like people recognize 
his skill. But let's go off the end for a second. Logic uh, is someone who I used, used to listen to a lot when he was coming up. Also faced the same ridicule. Like from Joe Button, they used to make fun of him because they said that he would always talk about his race and him being biracial, him being half black and half white. But because he looks on the surface white, they said that, you know, they kind of gave him problems about it. And that's actually part of the reason why Logic retired. He said that it really got to him that people kept making fun of him and like wouldn't take him seriously and kept making fun of him about his race. And to me, that's alarming, right? It's like you almost bullied... Yeah, it's like you almost bullied this person, and Logic is super successful. Like, he sells records, and it's like you bullied this guy out of it because what? He talks about race? So, like, now him as a white rapper— But what's the bigger picture, right? Are they trying to discourage white men from, like we were mentioning before, taking this over like they tend to do with, like, everything that they like? I think that that does play a part into it. I don't want to speak to— Everybody, because I definitely know, like I said, there are old school OG hip hop heads and even new school guys that like they're not like that. It's inclusive. They're like, yeah, everybody is welcome. Like it's unity. But there are those people that come out and try to like, nah, 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 because and I'll bring it back to M again real quick. Like there was a time and I think it was like when M was at his top, everybody was giving him his praise and say, yo, you don't want beef with him. And now it's like, once again, it's swinging back after this Billboard top 50 rappers list that before it used to be fans saying stuff that like, oh, don't nobody bump uh, Eminem in the hood or in the club. And now it's like his ver- some of his very peers are saying it now. And it's just like, why why y'all switch up? Y'all was cool with him for like 15 years from like they 2000 to switching, 2015. Bro. Let's talk about that time when... The game was salty about some Super Bowl shit, and he made it a 10-minute diss track. <laughs> Y'all remember that? <laughs> exactly. You know, Benzino did the same thing to M back in the day. So it's like, and M has withstand. He's taken all of it. You know, he's overcome it. I think, objectively, what I think, it, it's, it's, it's fear, obviously. And I think it's almost like someone infiltrating the culture that, puts on a great act that they're legit, they're real, they're for the people, but they're on the low, like, have an ulterior motive. They're like, they're not who they project themselves to be. So I think it stems from a fear, you know? But at the end of the day, it's like, I think we have to take that chance because if we keep um, blocking ourselves off and not letting people in just because of their skin color, then we're no better than the people that did that to us. Exactly. And I'm talking about all other races. Oh, you well know, said. Hip hop well is said. supposed to be greater. Yeah, hip hop is supposed to be greater than that. It's global, guys. So that was just something I wanted to touch on. I know Alexia on side conversations will have. She'll notice that as well, and she'll bring it up. And it was just something that you know I kind of had to think about. And when I saw that video, I was like, yeah, I was like, it's. It's this thing happening again. Oh, that's why you wanted to make this podcast. Yeah, because I, I noticed you, you'll bring it up from time to time. And you're not saying in a sense like white people deserve the dominance, but I get your point, right? It's like if we're just looking at the stats, like the sales, everything, and it's like, what the heck? And I think that's what it is. Like people of hip hop, some of the black people in it have a problem with crowning possibly a white dude the top spot. Like, the throne. Like, the king's chair. And it's like, yo, how can you be the king of black music and you're white? I think that's what it is. Yeah, and I think that those people are thinking too much. Because, like, I empathize with what you're saying. But you cannot deny Eminem's talent. So, if it was any other white guy, fine. But Eminem has been through the ringer. He is good at everything (laughs) in that industry. Like, no. Like... I don't know. I mean, look, I may have my reservations about some of his more recent music, but that's subjective. That's my own personal taste. Like, oh, I don't like some of his newer music or whatever. But that still doesn't take away from the, the fact. Legacy. That he, yeah, legacy and that he could wrap his ass off. I'm telling you right now, despite how I feel, if Alexia called me next week, I was like, yo, Chris, I got a battle set up with you and Eminem. I would be nervous as hell because I know what I'm going up against. I'm not going up against 
a Joe Smo dude from around the block. I'm going arguably against the best dude to ever get on the mic. So I'm like, I got to step my level up a thousand, ten thousand times because Eminem is literally like a human version oh, really? of a rap robot. really? Because as your manager, I'd be like, this is going to be fun. You're going to lose, but we're going to have an awesome time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, it would be fun. I'm not going to front, you know, but at the same time, I'm definitely going to try and give it my all, right? And it's like uh, competition, you know, brings out the best in people at times. But I'd be lying if I said I wouldn't be nervous to know like I was going against M. Like, who wants that problem? Mm-hmm. You know, and that's just me looking at the skill. I, I wouldn't even, my, the first thing in my mind when it'd be like, the white guy, I'd be like, M? Him? Like, I would start thinking about criminal, kamikaze. Like that's all exactly what records. I said before. If anyone was getting an exemption from all this crap, it's him. Yeah. No question. You know, and look, with that, yeah, and there's also been, you know, white artists. I've touched on this before. Um, Mac Lamore, where he's made songs talking about white privilege in rap. You know, that, you know, I respect because it's like it's, it's um it shows a lot of self-awareness of like where you stand in the room, you know. But I thought it was an interesting topic piece. But at the same time, it's like I think we need to stop making so many people feel uh uncomfortable and like they can't be included into this. Yeah, thing. I could I mean, see both sides of that, too. I would I would probably be extremely offended if someone came in like the Chinese culture and was like, this is stupid. And they like made, f- I don't know, but did it to make fun of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you just said reminded me of, um, that movie with Tom Cruise, the last samurai. You ever seen that or heard of it? No. Yeah. But like a lot of Japanese people were offended because they're like, how the fuck are you going to make a movie called the last samurai? And the last samurai is a white dude. Tom Cruise, it wasn't a Japanese guy in Japan. Like, yeah, that's weird. They were hella offended. Yeah, they were kind of like, here it is. It's this whole whitewashing. Yeah, again. but that's because the movie put the label on it. Like, I wasn't like, Tom Cruise can't play that. Like, you, they did that. So, yeah, same thing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's like that whitewashing. So, I guess um, it's that as well also for them. It's like, I guess, that fear of the whitewashing. But, yeah, guys, that's really kind of where I was coming at with it or kind of how I see it. Lexi, you have anything else you want to touch on or say about this? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like um, we did say what was on our minds, but we did a lot of tiptoeing around. So I'm curious, listeners, if, you know, if that's what we should be doing. Like, should we try to keep all of you in mind as to not offend anyone? Or should we be like, I mean, we did have the disclaimer at the beginning. Like, we're not trying to say anything. These are only our opinions. Like, if we already had that, should we still be tiptoeing around all these opinions? Or should we just come out and say what it is? Like, we don't want to be canceled, and I, we don't want to offend anyone. But, like, what would make this podcast, like, more enjoyable for you? What What would you want to hear? Yeah, or more informative, you know. And it just reminded me. I don't know. It slipped my mind. I was going to say this earlier. It's also a bit more obvious that it's targeted at white rappers because there are Hispanic rappers and there are Asian rappers as well. And I don't see any of them getting that amount of slack either. That's because I feel like everyone's like, ah, who cares? Like, they're rapping. Go rap over there. Have fun. But (laughs) they're not taking them as serious as, like, black or white, I guess, rappers. Yeah, because I think what it is, it's almost like, we're all under the same umbrella as, like, being minorities. So, like, yeah, my Asian brother is cool. Hispanic, but, like, we're all minorities. And then and, and white people, it's like, y'all not minorities. Really? Because I y'all see a lot white. of people, like, listen to Asian rap, and they're like, this is horrible. But who cares? Because Asians aren't aren't good at it. So, like, who cares? At least that's the side I've seen. I haven't really seen anyone like, wow, like, Asian rap is the only thing I listen to. You know what I mean? Like, it's more like they're like, oh, you poor thing. That's cute. You know, keep working on it, sweetie. I mean, I have like a lot of Asian friends and they've introduced me to Asian rappers and they just a, a lot of them come from like L.A. And they just seem to be accepted. I don't think they're horrible. I'm just saying that's how I wa- I'm watching people react to them. Mm. But that's the thing. Like, I don't see them being like not accepted 
by the culture. Like, I don't see these conversations coming up. I mean, I guess because, you know, you never hear about an Asian rapper. Yeah, but they're also not embraced by it. I don't know about that. Because I see a lot of, like, Asian dudes in battle raps doing stuff. I mean, remember when we saw... um, Dumbfounded? Bodied. Yeah. He's in there. He's a respected battle rapper. Yeah, but still, that was almost, like, comical. Like, this is cool to see an Asian guy rap about Asian shit. But, like... It was comical. Like, people weren't taking him serious. Like, he's got bars, but still, people are like, they're like, oh, he's like, he's over here, right? Like, oh, he's rapping over there. But then if it's like a white rapper, then he's under a microscope. But if it's a black rapper, he immediately already has the mic. Yeah, and and that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it's just a bit more, like, overlooked. It's like, yeah, like you said, it's like, yeah, he's over there. But maybe we'd be having a different conversation if, I don't know, on the Billboard Hot, uh, hottest 50 rappers. Oh, I imagine so. He was so. like number four. Yeah, if there was an yeah, Asian was like man or whatever four. on there, people would be like, what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So who knows? Maybe just because we don't live in that reality, that's not the case. But maybe we'll travel to multiverse and uh, there's a reality where that is happening. But our point is, if he had talent, it still shouldn't matter. But all right, yeah, anyway. So. But yeah, guys, that's uh, our conversation for today. Hope you guys enjoyed us dissecting this and just kind of our objective opinions on this. I just I just see it coming up a lot, you know, and as someone myself who's multiracial and so is Alexia, I think that, you know, talking about it, we should be able to and not be judged or people try to like cancel us. I mean, cause we're minorities as well. So it's like, I guess we'll find out in a week, huh? Yeah, I guess we will. <laughs> Let's see if the, we come back for an episode after this guy. <laughs> so if uh, we do come back, please follow us on YouTube at behind the struggle. You can also find me on TikTok at a and on the gram at Lexia underscore Lou. And you can find all of Chris's things, literally all of them at this is CEO.com. Guys, we'll see you again next week. Where uh, maybe we'll do a part two on this. I don't know. Depends on how you feel. All right, y'all. Have a good night and be well. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye.